Hi, this is Neil here from the Dirt Floor Workshop. Today, I'm going to talk about some tooling that I made for the shaper. Now, you probably think there's nothing special about that, and there's not. If you look at something like that, we've got a Lock 401, and this was made in Australia in the old days when we actually made stuff in Australia. That was before our politicians decided, in their great wisdom, that we didn't want any sweatshops in Australia. We we're going to send in everything to Asia, all our manufacturing to Asia. Well, thanks a lot, Barry. If I was a genius like you, I wouldn't have advised the Prime Minister to do that. But anyway, don't get me on with politics. If you have a look at this, it's got one, two, three, four, five positions. But that, that reminds me of something. Now, if you put your hands together like this, how many degrees can you turn it through? Like, would it be like 180, 250? This is incredible. Just, just think about this. How many degrees? 180, 360, 540, 720. Isn't that incredible? Anyway, I, I, I've got to get back on this. That's, what's that got to do with shape, as you're probably thinking? Anyway, as I was saying, what I've done is I've put this on at 14 degrees. So you don't have to, you don't have to put any positive rake on your tool. All you do is you just put that in there and it's automatically got 14 degrees of positive rake. Now there's not much to it really, all it is, all it is is a piece of round steel welded onto the flat and a hole through it and there's this piece here which is just a piece of round with a square hole filed in and a thread on it. Now, I know what you're thinking. What happens if you want to cut on the side here? How do you get your positive rate then? Well, I've actually made two, a left and a right hand one which have got the 14 degrees on that way. So when you put that on the side there, when you put that there, you get your positive rake out here, if you, if you, do, if, if you do it like that. Anyway, let's do a little bit of... Uh, now before we do that, I've, how do we work out how big a square we can cut out of a piece of round? Well, you can use geometry and do it like this and mark it out like I have here or you can do it mathematically. Now to do it mathematically the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the square on the on the base plus the square on the perpendicular height. So that just we can make up a little formula from that. D squared divided by 2, because the perpendicular height and the, the base are exactly the same, and we get the square root of that, and that gives us this length across here. So D is 100, squared is 10,000, divided by 2 is 5,000, Now we take the square root of 5,000. I've, I've already done it with my calculator, so I know the answer is 70.7. But that's a handy little formula. So I'll just put that down here for you. 
D squared divided by 2, and you take the square root of that. Now I'll just leave that you have a quick look at that so that you can, if you ever want to work out what size square you can cut out of a circle, that's the formula. Now, so we move on to how do we set the, the actual cutting length. Now we do that on the shaper, we'll put it out of gear so that we can rotate it. And you'll, you'll notice that the pointer comes off the scale and goes on the scale. So what they do on most shapers is they only show you half of, half of the travel because they don't need to show you the full length of travel. You can imagine where that goes. So in this case, we've got four inches, which is probably a little bit too much because we only want to cut 70 millimetres. So what you do is you put it in gear and you can adjust your travel then once it's in gear, you can adjust, and you've loosened off this, you can adjust your travel. So we'll adjust it to about three and a half inches. Lock that up again. And that's our travel set. Now, the position of the... To position our, to position our ram, all you do is you... Loosen this, on this shaper anyway, you just loosen that and you can move your ram backwards or forwards. Now what you want is you want a little bit more on this side than this side. When it drops off, when it drops off this side, you don't need much travel because it's, it's not going to... But what on this side you need a little bit so that when this drops back, it has time to just drop back and seat in place. So you have a little bit more travel on this side than this side. Let's have a look what that looks like. There we go. Ah, oh, still too much travel. But it doesn't matter. As it goes down further, it'll use more and more travel.
Now, if you have a look at that, it's not too bad a finish, considering the fact that I haven't sharpened that tool for hours. So, that's my, um, that's my video today. So, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for, uh, for watching. Bye.